This is Ethan Jennings, and welcome once again to the radio program of the All-New Church of Christ that meets in all Illinois at 220 North Van Street. Our worship times are 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning for our Bible study, followed by our worship service at 10.20 a.m. We also meet again at 2 p.m. on Sundays for our uh, afternoon worship service, and we meet on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for another Bible study. All are welcome to come and attend as we study God's Word at any of those times. We'd be glad to have you. If you have any questions about what is uh, what is said on the program, you can give us a call or text at 765-280-6855. That number again is 765-280-6855. Uh, you can also go to our website, allneedchurchofchrist.org, to see some of our sermons and uh, past bulletins. And we also have a Facebook page where you can look at the articles that have been uh, in more recent bulletins. And you can also call that number again at 765-280-6855 if you have any questions about some of the things you read uh, on in those articles or here in those sermons. Uh, or if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one Bible study, you can call uh, that number or text that number uh, as well. And we want to encourage you to send us uh, your Bible questions as well. Uh, you can either text them to me at that number. Again, it's 765-280-6855, or you can uh, mail us your questions, and you just uh, address them to the Alney Church of Christ, 220 North Van Street, P.O. Box 683, Alney, Illinois, 62450. Again, that Mailing address is the Only Church of Christ, 220 North Van Street, PO Box 683, Alney, Illinois, 62450. We're going to pick certain days depending on, uh, again, how many questions we get, certain uh, Sundays to answer as many of those questions as we possibly can. And again, I encourage you to do that. We're more than happy to go to God's Word for an answer, and that's what we'll do uh, on the radio program uh, on those days we pick out. Uh, last week we uh, began, again, I'm the new preacher here, uh, my name's Ethan Jennings again, and uh, I started back in September, again, Roger Hillis uh, finished out the radio program last year for us, uh, very good, faithful man, I, I thank him for doing that for us, very, very good studies in the book of Acts uh, that he did uh, there uh, throughout, uh, well, till the close of the year, very good studies. This uh, today we're actually going to continue uh, something we began last week, just kind of a really a part one, part two thing uh, that we're doing here on the program. Last week we, uh, uh, we we decided to answer the question, "Who we are? Who are we at the All New Church of Christ?" We saw uh, various different things. Of course, we're God's people. We're uh, part of God's family, God's household. Uh, we're uh, Christians. Uh, and things like that, but uh, just different things like that. But we're also uh, uh, we're, we're continuing that today, and we're going to be looking at the subject of who we are not, uh, just to help you also get to know us through that as well, because it's also important to understand who we are not uh, as well as who we are. And so that's what we're going to continue on and look at today. If you will go ahead, open up your Bibles over to the book of Colossians, chapter one. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 18 uh, here in just a, a brief moment. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. There in Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, this is what Paul had to say. But one of the things, uh, before I do read that verse, one of the things I want to point out through through that verse is the fact of who we are not. So what, one of the things who we are not. And the thing is, we among the only church of Christ are not a denomination. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 says this, He is also a head, this is talking about Christ, head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he will come to have first place in everything. Now, someone may ask, uh, well, why do I quote that verse about uh, Christ being the head of the body, the church? Well, the body, again, the body is being described as the church. Turn over, if you will, uh, with me to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, a couple, cha uh, a couple uh, books of the Bible back to Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, concerning the body, 
which is, again, the church. The Bible describes that both in Colossians and Ephesians. This is what it says in, uh, in chapter 4. Uh, beginning there in verse 4, it says, There is one body. You see, Christ never intended to build a whole bunch of denominations. He built one church. Look over to Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. I want you to notice what Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 16. Uh, and, I, and I apologize, I said verse 15, I mean verse 18. Uh, again, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, it says, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Is what he says. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower. You see, Jesus didn't build a whole bunch of denominations. He didn't build a whole bunch of churches. He built one church. That's the Lord's church, the church of Christ. You see, I'll tell you this right now. There, there was not a single denomination in the world until over a thousand years later. Uh, sometime after the death of Martin Luther, when folks decided to start a denomination in his name. Uh, and according to different uh, sources, uh, there are over uh, 33,000 uh, denominations today. The number uh, that I have right here is 33,800. Now, some folks want to uh, dispute that number. And they have every right to do so. They they may be uh, truthful in what they're saying. They say that uh, some of the uh, denominations there are just kind of being doubled. Like if you have one denomination in America, and then you have one in another country, and they're both of the same denomination, they, they would count that as two different denominations in that study, not one. Uh, and so there's a lot of... Uh, there may be some inaccuracies in that. Some people want to debate it might be closer to like 150 or 300. Uh, and even still, though, whether 33,000 or 300 or 100 or even 10 or 5 or even 2, even 1, the Lord did not establish a denomination. He didn't establish a bunch of divisions of churches. He built his one church. Yet, so many folks have failed to see that. I'll tell you, and what keeps these denominations divided is doctrine, and, and various doctrines that are conflicting with each other and contradicting each other, and it's just crazy what happens. Uh, and it, it's, it's craziness, and the thing is, the Lord's Church is not a denomination. It was never a denomination in the first place. Uh, that's the Church of Christ, the Lord's Church. We are not a denomination. But also, we, uh, uh, among the only Church of Christ, we are not an afterthought of God. Some teach uh, this doctrine, and we'll get on it, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it sometime, uh, sometime here on the program, uh, but one of the things that some people I'll tell you, they'll teach it in the religious world, and even some churches of Christ teach this, and they've fallen into this error, is they teach this doctrine we, we've come to call uh, premillennialism. And the thing is, when it comes to premillennialism, uh, it's the belief that uh, Christ is going to reign on earth for a thousand years, uh, which comes from taking Re Revelation chapter 20 uh, out of context, and really destroying the meaning of the passage. Uh, but again, some people, what they do is they say that that was actually what Christ's first, what, what, what he was supposed to do when he first came. He was supposed to actually establish a kingdom on earth the first time he came. Uh, many denominations teach this. I'm not going to say all of them do, uh, but many of them do, that Christ came here to earth and he, uh, his, his, the first thing he, well, not the first thing, but the thing he was supposed to do when he came down here was establish an earthly kingdom. Uh, the Jews rejected him because they were so wicked, and so therefore God set up the church as kind of a last-minute thing, a afterthought, something God had never even planned in the first place. That's what the church is, according to so many different people. Well, I'll tell you this right now. The Lord's church, the church of Christ, the church that Jesus built, is not an afterthought. The congregation here in Alney, 
We are not an afterthought of God. Ephesians uh, chapter 3, turn over there if you will. Ephesians chapter 3, noticing verses 10 through 11. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. Again, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a, uh, come a time, Lord willing, uh, that we'll get deeper into this subject. But I just want you to notice this idea of the church being an afterthought of God, something that He came up last minute, something that He didn't even plan. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter three, verses ten and eleven. It says, "So that the manifold wisdom of God might now be known, be made known through the church." To the rulers and the authorities and the heavenly places. Notice verse 11 now. It says, This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so just notice that. It says that this all was part of the eternal purpose to make known through the church the manifold wisdom of God. This was something that was not an afterthought. This wasn't a last-minute thing. This was something that God had planned. You can read about that also uh, through Romans chapter 8 and 9. Uh, you see this throughout uh, the Scripture, especially if you look in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. Uh, turn over there, if you will, Daniel uh, chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. It says in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, I kept looking in the night visions. And behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming, and he uh, came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. Now people say, well, why is that kingdom not on earth? Well, I'm going to tell you this right now, ladies and gentlemen. This prophecy came true. The kingdom is already here. Now let me, t now let me show you where it is. If you actually turn to the book of Matthew, you'll, Matthew, you'll actually uh, see both John the Baptist uh, and Jesus. Both were preaching. They would say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, they said that the kingdom was coming. Uh, and it depends on your translation. I think some say kingdom of heaven. Some say kingdom of God. Uh, but the point is, there was a kingdom coming. Well, when did this kingdom come? Notice with me Colossians. Turn over there. If you will, Colossians, back in Colossians chapter 1. I want you to notice with me what he says about a kingdom here. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, he says, For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. In Revelation chapter 1, uh, if you look over there, different translations uh, will actually say, He has made us a kingdom, uh, there in Revelation chapter 1, turn over there, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, and he has made us to be a kingdom, Revelation 1, verse 6, he made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever, amen. And so, when we read that passage, when we read all these passages, it's all pointing to the fact that the church was something God had he had it in his mind from the beginning. This wasn't something that came up as a last-minute effort that on God's behalf. And even to suggest that a plan of God would fail, it contradicts Scripture. You're looking uh the last chapter of Job. Uh, turn over to Job, if you will. And this is, uh, and then I, after I talk about this, and notice this verse here in Job, the last chapter, uh, there in chapter 42, uh, there in chapter 42 of Job, it, it, uh, I just want you to notice what it says, uh, and we'll move on to the next point. You see, people say, well, this plan of God to establish the earthly kingdom failed. Well, notice what it says in verse 2. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. To say that God sent Christ to establish a kingdom and Christ failed is to completely contradict the Bible. It's completely against the Scriptures to suggest such a thing. Now, well, and there's a lot of other things on premillennialism, which we'll have to get to in a later program, but I think that's an important thing to notice. The church was not an afterthought of God. It was something that God had planned from the beginning. He had the church 
in his mind all along. He had it in mind all along. And that's important to understand there. And so we, uh, among the brethren here the of the only Church of Christ, we are not an afterthought of God. We're not a part of an afterthought of God. But also, we are not a, quote, Church of Christ church. A lot of folks will say, well, that's a Church of Christ church. Well, no, that's that's not the case at all. We're just the Church of Christ. Romans 16, verse 16. It says there, greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. It's not a Church of Christ church. We are the Church of Christ, the same church that you can read about in the Bible. Another point of who we are not uh, is we're not a material building. I just want you to notice a few things that in the way the Bible describes the church. Acts chapter 5, verse 11. According to Acts chapter 5, verse 11, uh, it describes the church like this. It says, also the people from the cities, uh, my apologies, that's verse 16, verse 11, it says, and great fear, Acts chapter 5, verse 11, and great fear came over the whole church. Now, does that mean that the windows and the uh, the the bricks or, or whatever was a, a part of that material building started shaking? Well, no. Uh, that's not the case at all. Also, you look at Acts 11, verse 22. We're seeing not only is there fear coming upon the church, but we see the church actually being described as having ears. Acts 11, uh, verse 22. Acts 11, verse 22 says, The news about them reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem. Again. Acts 14, verse 27, it talks about the church being ga- uh, being gathered together. Acts chapter 14, verse 27, it says, When they arrived and gathered the church together. Now, what does that mean? Did the church fall apart? They started grabbing the pieces and uh, putting it back together or gathering all the pieces together? Well, of course not. This is talking about people. The church is the people. And so we at the Only Church of Christ, we make up, a local congregation of the church. The church is not a material building. We are not a material building. But also, we are not in the majority. Matter of fact, God's people have always been in the minority. If you actually study the scriptures uh, long enough, you'll see that. Deuteronomy 7, verse 7, notice this. Back in the days of Israel, when the Israelites were the people of God, this is what uh, God had to say. Verse Uh, Deuteronomy 7, verse 7. It says, The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any of the peoples. Notice this next phrase. For you were the fewest of all peoples. Notice that right there. Back in the days when uh, the Jews were God's people, they they even were in the minority. You can also see this in Matthew 7, verses 13 through 14, talking about not uh, not entering through the wide gate. Why? Because uh, wide is the gate that leads to destruction, and there are many who find it. But of the narrow gate, we're supposed to enter through that because it leads to life, and there are few that find it. And so... Whether you're talking about the days of the Jews, these days we're living into the uh, today, or uh, let's just say the end of time, God's people have never been in the minor or in the majority, and that's I think what we're going to see as well throughout the years. And the Bible even makes it clear that's going to be the case at the end of time. Before we continue on, though and continue on through these uh, different uh, examples of who we are not and different things, uh, descriptions of who we are not. Uh, I just want to remind you that this program is uh, brought to you by the Olney Church of Christ that meets in Olney, Illinois at 220 North Van Street. Uh, again, our worships, uh, worship times are 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning for our Bible study, followed by our worship service at 10.20 a.m. We also meet again at 2 p.m. on, again, Sundays for our afternoon worship service. And we also meet on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for another Bible study. And again, 
All are welcome to come and attend as we study God's Word and strive to worship Him in spirit and in truth uh, at any of those times. We'd be glad to have you. And if you have any questions about what is said on the program, uh, what has been said, uh, and what uh, you may have heard on a past program, you can give us a call or text at 765-280-6855. Again, that number is 765-280-6855. Uh, you can go to our website, allneechurchofchrist.org, to see uh, some of our sermons and uh, past bulletins. And we have a Facebook page where you can look at uh, some of our articles as well. And you can also call that number, 765-280-6855, if you have any questions about some of the things you've read or heard on uh, any of those uh, sermons or articles. Or if you'd like to have a one-on-one Bible study, you can call uh, that number as well. We're more than happy to uh, study one-on-one with folks, and we want to encourage you to send you, uh, to, excuse me, to send us your Bible questions as well. Uh, you can either text them to me at, again at that number seven six five two eight zero six eight five five, or mail us your questions, and you can mail those to the Alney Church of Christ at. 220 North Van Street, P.O. Box 683, Alney, Illinois, 62450. Again, that mailing address is the Alney Church of Christ, 220 North Van Street, P.O. Box 683, Alney, Illinois, 62450. We're going to pick, again, some certain Sundays, depending on how many questions we get, uh, and we're going to take as much time as we can to answer uh, th- those questions. And I encourage you to do that. We're more than happy to go to God's Word uh, for an answer. And we'll answer those questions again based off of God's Word uh, on the program. And so, uh, but as we continue our, our look at who we are not here uh, among the only Church of Christ, we're not a social club. I- I'll tell you, some churches become social clubs. They uh, I hear of churches installing uh, coffee places in there, and I, again, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but I'm hearing stories of churches uh, installing like coffee shops in their own in their buildings and stuff like that. Uh, but even besides that, some people have uh, dining rooms in their church buildings and things like that, and they get so focused on uh, having physical meals and getting all into the social activity world. Uh, the problem is, well, notice how the Bible describes the church. Look over in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, if you will, uh, with me. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Again, we've looked at this and we've talked about the kingdom, understanding that the kingdom of God is the church. Notice with me Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. It says, the kingdom of God is not eating, and drinking. Notice that right there. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so, again, when people try to turn the church into a social club, that's not what we are. That's not uh, what what, what the Lord's church is in any way, shape, or form. That's not who we are here uh, at the, uh, among the only church of Christ. And I'll tell you some other things we're not. We're not a political organization. We're uh, commanded to respect the government, uh, regardless of whether they agree with us or not on certain things. Uh, I'll tell you, many denominations, and sadly even uh, some uh, folks who uh, are part of the Lord's Church who have gone into error, they've turned their uh, facilities over to political use. Uh, people will have debates, they'll have people speak in their buildings. Uh, that's not what the church is supposed to be all about, uh, starting up all kinds of political things. Uh, that's not what the only Church of Christ is. Uh, and also, uh, based on all of this, we're also not a man-made church wearing human names. Again, we're not a denomination, we're not some church that was made by someone hundreds of years ago. People like to call us the Campbellites, uh, which I know I never even knew about whoever Campbell uh, Alexander Campbell was until I think it was two or three years ago. So that uh, just doesn't make any sense to pe- for people to kind of throw that name around as a 
really a derogatory term, if you will, is really what it is. Uh, but we're not a man-made church wearing human names. We go by the scriptures. We go and we say, let's be the same church that you can read about in the Bible. Let's be the same people that you can read about. Uh, again, in the New Testament, Christians not holding any other name. Uh, we don't go by we don't go by Lutheran Church. That's not a Bible name. We're not wearing a human name. Methodist, Baptist, Catholic. Those are all human names. Those aren't, those aren't names you're going to find in the Bible. We go by what the Bible says. We are the church of Christ, the church that Jesus built. We wear his name. And that's very important. Having uh, thought about all these things we've talked about, about who we are not, and maybe you remember what we've talked about, again, on who we are what, from last week. Perhaps you're listening to the program and you want to become a part of God's people. You want to become a part of the Lord's church. Uh, you, you want to uh, obey the gospel, become a Christian. I'll tell you exactly how you can do that. And you can be added to the Lord's church, the family of God, the kingdom of God. That's who we are. We're God's kingdom. We're, we're, his, we're a part of his family. And you can become a part of that family. And I'll tell you exactly how you can do that. The Bible makes it very clear on what we must do in order to be saved. First of all, you have to believe in Jesus. John 3 verse 16 uh, says very clearly, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can read about that also. Uh, similar uh, words concerning how faith is required to be saved. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible, not improbable, not unlikely. It says impossible to be uh, impossible to please him. For the one who comes unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so you, you can see that it's important to believe in order to be saved. But there's other things as well. People advocate faith alone. That's not a doctrine that's, you're, that you're going to find in the Bible at all. People will twist up Romans 3 and 4 like crazy to try and get that doctrine out when all they're doing is, well, not even paying attention to the context of those chapters. But Because there's more than just faith that's required in order to be saved. You also have to repent. Repentance is a change of heart or change of mind that's going to lead to a change in action. You see this uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter told those crowds on the day of Pentecost when they said, What must we do? Peter didn't say, Oh, you already believe you're okay. He said, Repent. That was the first word he spoke to them. Repent, Acts 2 verse 38. But you got more than that. You also have to confess Jesus as Lord. Romans 10, 9 and 10 makes it very clear. It says uh, very clearly, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses unto salvation. But you also have to be baptized. Uh, it's made very clear throughout the scriptures. Mark 16, verse 16, Jesus himself said, He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. You see this also in other passages as well. You see this in Acts 2, verse 38, the later half, besides repentance, Peter told those crowds on the day of Pentecost to be baptized. For what? For the remission of sins. Not because of. People like to do all kinds of things with that word for. No. The Greek word means unto, not because of. That needs to be understood. People fail to recognize that. And once you've done that, once you've been baptized, you have to arise out of those waters of baptism to walk in the newness of life, as we read about in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and Romans 6, verses 1 through 4. Thank you once again for tuning in to this program. The uh, the radio program of the All New Church of Christ that meets at 220 North Van Street. And again, our times of worship are 930 at, on Sundays uh, for our Bible study, followed by our worship service at 1020. 
Uh, and then we also have the 2 o'clock afternoon service, 2 p.m. on Sundays, and the 7 p.m. Bible study on Wednesdays. All are welcome to come and attend as we study God's Word at any of those times. We'd be glad to have you. And once again, thank you for tuning in to the radio program of the Only Church of Christ, and have a great day, everyone.